listening to History Man 1781, a project of ekbarns.com, where we walk in the footsteps of heroes and proclaim freedom reigns. On today's podcast, we're talking to Roselle Bramlett, the executive director of the Union County Museum in Union, South Carolina. And we're going to talk about uh, just a little bit of the history of Union County and uh, maybe a, a church or two and some of the artifacts that you'll find in, that a visitor will find in the museum. Uh, welcome, Roselle. Thank you for having me. Roselle, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about Union County uh, and how you came into this area. I came here in 1972 with my husband who came as a store manager. I see. And we moved our family from Georgia here. I see. We, we talked about this earlier. In, in many respects, Union County is kind of isolated uh, from other parts of South Carolina. Um, but, and, and you were probably an outsider in some ways. I feel like that if you were not born here, you always remain an outsider. That's right. So it's, it, there's a lot of history that goes back uh, uh, to the founding of this nation here in Union, South Carolina. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Deep River Church, or, or the, uh, the church that uh, is called Pageant's Creek Baptist Church. Tell us a little bit about that. Pageant's Creek Baptist Church was originally called the uh, Church of Christ on Tiger River, and it was originally started about a mile from where it is located today. And over time, it was moved up the road about a mile and a new building was erected and because it was built on Paget's Creek they changed the name. Originally there is some dispute about whether it is older than Lower Fairhorse Church. There was a building on Dying Creek that was used to meet for different in that area for different things. It was not built as a church. It was just a community building. And that's where Lower Fair Forest started. Uh, There's dissension between the churches as to whether Paget's Creek helped start Lower Lower Fair Forest or whether it was vice versa. Anyway, the... uh, Paget's Creek became a church officially on November the 22nd, 1784. But prior to that, they actually came, I think you were telling me that uh, the settlers came down from Deep River, North Carolina, into this area and established a congregation at that point. Is that correct? Right. So, uh, and then I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but... uh, the chron- chronology of, of that congregation started when they came down in 1759. In 1760, they had 104 members in the congregation. Mm-hmm. They moved over to Fair Forest Church in 1762, right? And then 10 years later, they had 160 members uh, at that time. And then uh, 1784, 12 years later after that, they formed the Paget's Creek Baptist Church. Well, Paget's Creek um, started out, many of the members that were there were Quakers. I see. The, the Quaker settlement had decided to move on, and the ones that did not want to follow the rest of the group stayed and became Baptist. I see. There. The Fair Forest community in general, for our listeners, uh, was was very prominent in the backcountry as far as militia were concerned from the Patriot side in fighting off the Loyalists and involving themselves in several of the big battles like Calpins or Kings Mountain and that sort of thing. They they brought a, a, a big contingent to those to those battles big in these communities. So I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. a lot of the history in any community in in South Carolina especially, but in North Carolina in, in the southern campaigns can be traced back through the churches uh, and the congregations. Uh, And a lot of the political statements that came out of the revolution were part and parcel because of the individuality of the uh, belief system 
of, uh, of those churches where you are accountable as an individual, not as a corporate entity, right? So just because, you're, just because your parents did such and such, that doesn't mean you're not accountable for your own actions. Right. And that individual liberty, that individual accountability uh, played into the revolution uh, uh, quite severely in, uh, from the British standpoint. So uh, do you, the, the Quakers were the first members. Uh, do you know anything about where they went to or, or anything like that? I do not know where the group that left went, but uh, we do have a Quaker cemetery located down near where the church was. So, uh, and it, it is still being kept today. It's interesting for, uh, for our listeners, uh, the oldest cemetery in Camden, uh, that was also called the Quaker Cemetery. And the Quakers uh, preceded many of the other congregates that came, came into the area, uh, especially in the Southern Campaign area. Tell us about some of the Revolutionary War things that are going on or that y'all are, y'all are planning at the Cross Keys area. We are working on having a muster to start at uh, the Cross Keys house in the uh, fields around the house there. And then since we cannot use the uh, battleground at Blackstock, we wanted just before the anniversary of the Battle of Blackstock, we wanted to have the muster where people can see, come out and watch how the encampment would have taken place. From a historical standpoint, it's kind of a cornucopia of different events going on from different decades or different eras in the community. Blackstock was actually a Revolutionary War battle where Tarleton and and Thomas Sumter squared off, and, and Sumter is actually Tarleton's first defeat at the, at the hands of Sumter, uh, at, at the hands of any patriot uh, entity, and, and, and Sumter actually, with his militia, went up against Tarleton and his British uh, dragoons, and uh, it, was a, it was a good battle. But you're establishing this muster at Cross Keys, which was what? It was the last place that Jefferson Davis stopped to eat on his, as he was leaving uh, after the end of the war. Uh, the Civil War. That's so right. this was a uh, a historical place during this the Civil War. And th- it was actually a stagecoach way area, right? I mean, it was one of the stops on mm-hmm. the stagecoach that uh, the route that was established probably in the 1830s. Is that right? Uh, somewhere in somewhere the, there. obviously prior to the Civil War, mm-hmm. but. Uh, or the war between the states, or the war of northern aggression, depending on what side of the, <laughs> what side of the conflict you're on. But uh, there were several different points uh, on that wagon road or that uh, stagecoach route. Cross Keys is one of them. Cross Anchor is another. Well, and, there are markers in front of the Cross Keys house that give you the mileage to uh, Columbia and uh, back to Union. So, so back to back to Pageant's Creek. Uh, there was something that happened here recently uh, in regards to the Revolutionary War. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that. Well, the graveyard at Padgett's Creek has... I'm talking about the Quaker, the Quaker graveyard. No, this is the Padgett's Creek Cemetery. Okay. They're right. at the church now. Okay. Uh, there are many different areas. Uh, we've got the slave area. Uh, we've got the Revolutionary War area. And we've got Civil War area. And just recently, the White family came from nine different states and had a ceremony there marking the grave of their ancestor who fought in the Revolutionary War. Wow. That is, that's, that's interesting. You also showed me pictures that are in your, uh, your files here uh, of that church. And originally, that church was built on stilts. Right. So the, why was it built on stilts? At that time, everybody came to church in the horse and buggies and to keep the animals out of the weather, whether it be cold and rainy or whether it would be the heat in the summertime, they raised the church high enough that they could pull the buggies underneath the church and get the animals out of the weather. And then later on, there was there's been several renovations to that church, but tell us some other of the 
of the unique features of that church? As time passed and no longer were coming to church in the horse and buggy, they lowered the church and they added a porch across the front and then later that was removed and a portico or entryway was added to the front and it was enclosed to make a foyer for the church. So over the years, we've got the, still have the same church. They've just made some additions to it. You've got some original pews in that church, uh, in the in the top part of that church, which uh, uh, which I think some of my listeners would would find interesting. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, some of our first uh, members of the church there were black. They were the the slaves that had been freed, and they lived in the neighborhood, and they joined the church. The slave balconies upstairs were where they were uh, seated every Sunday. And the, some of the uh, pews that are still in the church are the ones that they sat in. I see. So they were listening to the same sermons that mm-hmm. everyone else was listening they to. It wasn't of, like it was a separate sermon. They were part of the congregation just like everybody else. Outstanding. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about what people will see when they come to the museum here in Union County. You're located on Main Street, Union, South Carolina, right? 127 West Main Street, I see. Union. Uh, upon entering the front of the museum, we have a section that documents Union from the beginning of the settlement to the present day. One of the things that you'll see is Pinckneyville. That was a, a settlement here that was supposed to have been a very historical place. It was being... It was built on the same idea as Charleston, the layout and all. And it was supposed to have been built on the banks of the, the river. And at that time, everything was being moved by water, your barges, your boats, and everything. And then the railroad came through Spartanburg, and it all went kapoo. <laughs> so, kind of bypassed you, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> well, it bypassed everything. <laughs> but... Uh, You'll see the different things that uh, Eddie Sims' picture of the uh, Mosley's Oak is in uh, display there. With, it's an original. Okay. Which Tell me what that what that uh, described. In that okay, picture. Um, Mr. Mosley was a he was a procurer of supplies for the troops, so he went out. Out of which war? <laughs> the Revolutionary the War. Revolutionary War. Okay. All right. He went out and found food. Okay. He would not ride a horse because he said you couldn't slip up on anything riding a horse. So he walked everywhere he went. And on this particular day, he had gone out and killed a deer. And on the way back, it was getting late, and he saw the wolves were trying to to follow him. And he knew he wasn't going to be able to get back before they surrounded him. So he threw the the deer in the water in the creek, and he climbed up and sat in the tree all night, waiting for daylight to come. And as daylight came and the deer, the wolves went back into the woods, he crawled down, uh, retrieved his deer out of the water. So did he shoot any of them? He, no, he did not shoot any of the, the wolves. Uh, because at that time, they said he had run out of ammunition. I see, I see. So he had already killed the deer, and he didn't have anything to protect himself with, so he sat in the tree all night. But uh, after the war, he went back. He was a blacksmith. So he went back to being a smithy, and he could pull your teeth as well as put shoes on your horse. <laughs> we have his... Uh, instruments upstairs that he made himself to pull teeth with so who who painted the picture and that and that picture and is depicting the wolves and the deer and, and that whole well, scene it, it is just the tree that he's sitting in well, the tree that he's and in. Eddie Sims Miss Sims had begged her father to let her go to, to Paris to study painting 
And at that time, young ladies did not do anything like that. Right. The only thing they would do was paint on in the afternoon for recreation. And so he had begged his daughter that to not do that. And she loved painting. So after the war, and this was the Civil War, he lost all of his money. He lost everything. And she kept the family up with her paintings. Okay. So, what a cool story. <laughs> that is a cool story. Uh, so what else are they going to see? Well, we have uh, the next section will be the uh, section of the home and garden. It was the plantation, the equipment that was used on the, the farms and the plantations, the plows, the saws, the different equipment that was used in daily life. Uh, we also have the uh, kitchen uh, equipment, the pots and pans and the bowls and all that you would have seen in any kitchen on a plantation. We have uh, the pottery, all the different uh, jugs and things that were made back during that time. And uh, they were used for storing uh, lard, they were for oils and uh, syrup. And then we have the next section you'll see would be the industrial section. We've got things from the beginning of the industrial period up through today. And then fourth section would be the uh, military section. We've got coats of military uniforms from the Spanish-American War all the way through the Vietnam War. We've got artifacts that uh, were brought back from all the wars, uh, bayonets. Uh, including the revolution. In, in, including the revolution from the whole military period. And the fourth, the uh, fifth section would be our genealogical library that uh, we're very proud of. The local library here does no longer handle those, nor does the university library. So they donated approximately 3,000 books to us to do all of the research. So this would be the, the number one place to go if you want to study your family history. It is a great little museum. I think I've said that every time I've come in here. I'm just in awe at the amount of stuff that you have here. And I, I know y'all are proud of it. And I'm proud yeah. to be from South Carolina and have some part, you know, and, and claim it as part of a, as a South Carolinians. Well, Miss Ologene would say, when people said, well, do you not want this? And she kept, she was concerned about space. And I said, Miss Ologene, take it. Whatever they want to give us, we'll find a place for it. And, and I, I still, I don't know how to say no. And it, the beautiful thing about this museum is all the stuff in this museum is from Union County. So it's, what, a, what a cool little museum it is. What would you want people to take away from their visit here? I want them to see what an important part Union County has played in the history and the, uh, the development of this part of the country. Because from the very first settlers until today, we have strived to make this a good place to live. Very well put, and, and I would I would venture to say that it not only played a big part in this community, in this part of the, the state, but in the nation. When we talk about the militias coming out of here and fighting at some of those preeminent battles for liberty's sake, the lives of the citizens here in this county uh, played such an important part in the, uh, the lives of the citizens in this country today. Well, do you realize that during the wars we have never had to enact the draft because we had enough volunteers no one was ever drafted then they say a lot about the very people here patriotic very patriotic well thank you so much for spending time with me but my last question is what does liberty mean to roselle bramlett well to me liberty is the ability to worship and live as i want to without my freedoms infringing on anyone else's. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.